Hi, I'm Assemblymember Noreen Evans, Chair of the Assembly Budget Committee. California has chronically late budgets that often fail to solve our state's problems. Overdue budgets do not mean just frustrating political gridlock in Sacramento. They mean nursing homes shutting down, after-school programs for kids eliminated, and infrastructure projects halted. There are several common myths about why our budget process is such a mess. I hope to reveal the underlying truth. Myth number one, we just need to cut our out of control spending. State spending has risen by $46 billion in the last 10 years. This large increase in spending makes it easy to believe this myth. But when broken down, you can see the truth behind it. 68% or about $31 billion of that increase is due to population growth and inflation leaving a real increase of about $15 billion in state spending over the past 10 years. Where is that money being spent? The state of California and the laws governing the way we budget have changed substantially. First, let's focus on how the laws governing the way we budget have changed, specifically voter-approved initiatives, previous tax cuts, and past budget compromises. Voter-approved initiatives adopted in the past 10 years have increased state spending. Propositions 9, 83, and 184 all create stiffer criminal sentences and parole requirements. In 2008, spending on prisons was $3.4 billion higher than it should be after accounting for inflation and population growth. Furthermore, Proposition 98 guarantees we spend a certain percent of our revenues on education, Proposition 49 requires we spend a certain amount on after-school programs. Proposition 42 requires spending on transportation. And Proposition 1A locks in spending on local government. These ballot initiatives had no dedicated funding stream, meaning that in order to pay for them, we had to cut the budget in other areas, such as health care, higher education, and state parks. In addition to voter-mandated spending, previous tax cuts are costing our state money today. Governor Schwarzenegger cut the vehicle license fee in 2003. Because the vehicle license fee was a source of funds for local governments, not state government, the governor promised that the state would backfill the money local governments lost. The state's backfilling obligation has grown 28.9% and now costs us over $6 billion every year. In addition, we are still paying for compromises made in order to avoid raising taxes to balance prior budgets. Since 2004, the state has sold nearly $15 billion in economic recovery bonds in order to avoid increasing taxes to balance our budgets. This is like using your credit card to pay your monthly bills with no way to pay that back. We now pay about $1.3 billion in debt service on these bonds. Since the state has all of this locked-in spending that is not tied to any specific revenue stream, and since passing new taxes in the legislature is close to impossible, we've cut many other state services in order to balance the budget. This is a 150-foot scroll created by Assembly Democrats to demonstrate that we have indeed made massive cuts to programs in order to balance our budgets. This list includes over $26 billion in cuts adopted over the past six years. As mentioned earlier, in addition to the structural changes in how we spend our money, the people of California have changed as well. And likewise, we have changed the way that government serves them. There are nearly 8% more children in our school system than there were 10 years ago. And all of these kids need an education to make our workforce competitive in a worldwide economy. Autism diagnoses have risen 1,342% and the state of California works to ensure that these children can live meaningful lives. The baby boom generation is getting older, and health care costs continue to rise dramatically, an equation that spells increased state spending. The prison population has more than doubled in the past 20 years, costing the state more and more money to house more and more inmates. Educating our children, keeping the streets safe, caring for the elderly, and assisting the developmentally disabled, this hardly seems like out-of-control spending. Myth number two, but what about the waste, fraud, and abuse found in our giant state bureaucracy? In 2004, Governor Schwarzenegger created the California Performance Review Commission that spent months searching for wasteful spending. It turns out the most significant changes proposed by the governor would have consolidated or eliminated numerous consumer boards and commissions, reduced public participation in government, and would not have saved the state any significant money. 
We could lay off every state worker and still be unable to balance our budget. But then, who would maintain our highways? Who would staff the Department of Motor Vehicles? And of course, every state park would be closed. Myth number three, bad behavior in the Capitol prevents a budget from being adopted on time. Well, it is true that every year our legislature hits gridlock in adopting a state budget. But why is that? California is one of only three states in the nation requiring a two-thirds vote of the legislature to adopt a budget. This two-thirds vote requirement allows a small minority to hijack the process and hold the budget hostage for an ideological agenda unrelated to budgeting. The other two states are Rhode Island and Arkansas. Their combined budgets are less than one-tenth of California's. So how could it possibly be so hard for a couple of members from the minority party to vote for a budget compromise? To answer that question, we turn to this man. Grover Norquist is a Washington, D.C. lobbyist and president of the ultra-conservative special interest group Americans for Tax Reform. He is best known for saying he wants to shrink government to the size that he can drown it in the bathtub. He created this No New Taxes Pledge. The pledge is a fill-in-the-blank certificate. Aspiring Republican candidates across the nation download and sign it. They do this to win support from conservative interest groups while campaigning. In California, nearly every Republican legislator has signed this pledge. And this pledge is strictly enforced by the Republican Party here in California. At the 2009 GOP convention, a formal resolution was adopted withholding political support from the party for the six legislators that recently voted in favor of temporary tax increases. So in years when revenues plummet and temporary taxes are needed to stabilize our budget, Republicans refuse, we can't get a two-thirds vote, and we all lose. In summary, the legislature is required to spend money on a multitude of programs, many of which do not have specific revenue streams. This places a greater strain on our general fund budget. We've borrowed money as band-aids to balance past budgets, and we've made dramatic cuts to programs that serve California's most vulnerable citizens. California needs real budget reform to responsibly move into the future. It is a fact that California's budget process needs improvement, but at least now you understand a little better how we got into this situation. The next question is, where do we go from here? Many reform ideas are being debated, some of which are helpful, some of which only address the symptoms, not the causes, of our problems. To find out more about the ideas being discussed, go to my website at www.assembly.ca.gov forward slash Evans and click on budget reform. Thanks for listening.